So now that we've defined the equations of lines and planes, one of the things you're frequently interested in is knowing the distances between them. So the simplest example I'll give of this, how do you find the distance from a point to a line? So suppose I have some line here and I have some point P not on the line and I want to know the distance between the line and P. So distance here means the shortest distance. In other words, it means the distance here. So this is D. So we want to find out what is D. Okay. So we can do this using our equation for a line. So we know that the line is defined by the equation x is a plus lambda b. So therefore, we have some point on the line here, A. We also have a vector moving along the line, which is V. It's V. OK. Um, just to save the drawing e easier, I'm going to move A over here. It doesn't matter, but it just makes the picture easier to draw. Okay, so A is over here, B is there, and P is there. So how can I compute this distance here? Well, first of all, I can... The vector P minus A is the vector here, which goes from A to P. Oh, this green pen is not very good. Okay. So this vector here, from A to P, this is the vector P minus A. Okay. And you see we've made a nice little triangle here. So if in addition I know this angle theta here, then you can write an equation for this triangle, namely that the distance d is equal to the length of this vector p minus a times the sine of the angle theta. Okay, so what is the angle theta? The angle theta is the angle between this vector and the line. So that's the angle between this vector and the vector v. So theta is angle between the vector p minus a and v. Okay, or in this case it's actually minus v, but it doesn't make any difference. Okay. So therefore, we know from the formula for the scalar product, oh sorry, the vector product, that v cross p minus a is equal to length of v, length of p minus a, times the sine of theta. Okay. But you see that what you've got here is just the distance to the line. So this is equal to the length of v times d. And then simply rearranging that, we get the distance to the line is equal to v cross p minus a, divided by the length of v. Okay. So if you know the equation of the line in this form, and you know the coordinates of the point, then you can use this formula here to find the distance from the point to the line. Okay. That's the formula. Okay, so similarly we can find the distance from a point to a plane. The, uh, the idea is very similar. So let me draw the picture again. I have some plane here. Okay, and I have some point not on the plane P. And I want to know the distance, that is the shortest distance, from this point to the plane. So let's say it's like this. Okay, so clearly it should be perpendicular. This one is also perpendicular here, right? So this is the distance D I want to find. 
Okay. Now, I'm going to assume that you've got the equation of the plane in the form x dot n equals a dot n. In other words, that you know the normal to the plane. If you don't know it, you can easily work it out from the other definition. So here, we've also got a point on the plane a like this. And just as here, you see the p minus a. Let me give this pen one more chance. p minus a is the vector here. P minus a. And you see again, we have constructed ourselves a nice little right angle triangle here. Okay. So if I define theta as being the angle here, then we have that d is equal to p minus a. Now theta is here, so it's cos theta. So there's a reason I chose theta to be this angle and not this angle in this case. And that's because if you know the normal vector, the normal vector points up like this, right? So this here is the vector n. And so you can see that theta is the angle between n and p minus a. Okay, so n is here, okay, p minus a is pointing this direction, so theta is the angle between them. So therefore, we can use the scalar product. We know that this then is equal to the length of n times the length of p minus a times the cosine of theta. And you see that what you have here is just the distance. So this is length of n times d. And rearranging, you get the formula for the distance. d is equal to normal vector scalar product p minus a divided by length of n. Okay. So again, if you know the equation for the plane in terms of its normal vector, then you can work out the distance from any point to the plane using this formula here. Okay. So there's just one final case I'm going to talk about, which is slightly more tricky, not, not that much more tricky, which is the distance between two lines. So I've got two lines like this. Here's one line going off here. Here's another line going off down here. So you have to imagine this is in three dimensions, right? Because in two dimensions, these lines will always meet unless they're parallel, right? So then the distance between them is zero. But in three dimensions, it's more interesting, right? In three dimensions, I can have lines kind of like this, which never meet each other, OK? And then you can ask what's the shortest distance between them. And with a bit of thought, it becomes clear that the shortest distance between them should occur at the point which is such that this line is perpendicular to both lines here. So the length of this line tells you the shortest distance between these two lines here. So how can I find this distance d? Well, suppose... OK, we've got the equations of the line. So that means we know a point on this line. Let's call it A1. We know a point on this line. Let's call it A2. And also, we know the vectors along each line. So we know a vector along this line. Let's call that one V1. And a vector along this line. Let's call it V2. So how can we find a formula for this? So the way you do it is quite clever. I like this argument, so let me show you. If you take the first line and you shift it down along this line here, so I move this line vertically down as I've drawn it, okay? and I move it down until it reaches this line, then I get the image of the line here. 
So I've just taken this first line and I've just shifted it down until it meets this second line here. Okay. So then these two lines, this line 2 and then this pink line I've drawn here, define a plane. So there is some plane which is containing both of these lines. Okay. And it is clear that the distance from this line to this line is the same as the distance from this line to this plane. Okay. So let's call this the plane pi. Pi is often a symbol given to planes for some reason. So let me write that down. So you argue in the following way. You say the distance between lines 1 and 2. Okay, So this one is line 1 here, this one is line 2 there. This is the same as the distance between the line number 1 and the plane pi, which is this pink plane I've drawn here. But this line here has a constant distance from this plane. The way I constructed it, I shifted the line by a constant distance. So this distance from the line to the plane is a constant, so therefore this is the same as the distance from point A1 here to the plane pi. So in other words, this distance here is the same as this distance here. But you see what you've done now is you've changed the problem of the distance between two lines into the problem of the distance from a point to the plane, which we already have a formula for. So we know that this distance from a point to a plane, that's what we worked out here, well, there's this formula here. Okay. So converting this formula, A1 is the point, so this is what I mean by P in this formula. Okay. And A here is the point on the plane, point on the plane is a2. So I need to take this formula with p replaced by a1 and a replaced by a2. So I get this is equal to n dot a1 minus a2 divided by the length of n. Okay. But we don't know n yet, so I need to find n. n is the normal to the plane. But we can find it by using the vectors along the two lines, right? Because vector v2 is like this, vector v1 is like this. So I can take the normal to the plane as being the vector product of v1 and v2. That will then define a vector pointing perpendicular to the plane. So here I can take n equals v1 cross v2, and I get the formula that this then is v1 cross v2, scalar product a1 minus a2, divided by v1 cross v2. And that's the final formula, because now we've written the distance in terms of the defining vectors a and v on both lines. Okay. So maybe I'll just write it over here. The distance between the two lines is equal to v1 cross v2 dot product a1 minus a2 divided by v1 cross v2. Okay. okay, so on the worksheet, on the practice sheet this week, there's a few questions calculating distances between points and lines, points and planes, and lines and lines. And to do that worksheet, you need to use the three formulas here. This one is point to line, this one is point to plane, and this one is two lines.